Falling for Autumn by Kimberly and James Dean. It is the first day of fall and Pete the cat is feeling blue. I like summer better, he says. In summer, I can swim and surf and play at the beach. Maybe you just need to remind yourself of all the things you love about autumn, Mom suggests. Hmm, Pete says. I'll try. Pete finds Grandma in the kitchen. She's baking delicious pumpkin pies. The whole house smells sweet and spicy. Pete loves helping Grandma bake pumpkin pie, but he loves helping eat it even more. After the baking is done, Pete picks a squat orange pumpkin from the counter and slips it into his backpack as a souvenir. Next, Pete heads to the town corn maze. Pete and his friends wander through the long twisty paths made of tall corn stalks. The best part of the corn maze is getting lost and having to start over again. As he leaves, Pete plucks a golden corn cob from the maze and places it inside his backpack. Then Pete visits Grandpa, who is knitting on the porch. Grandpa helps Pete use the knitting needles to knit the yarn into cool patterns. Together, Pete and Grandpa make a long cozy scarf for Pete to wear. When they're done, Pete chooses a little ball of leftover yarn and places it inside his backpack. Next, Pete goes to the hayride at the park. Pete, Bob, Mom, Dad, and Grandpa all pile into a wagon filled with hay. They go on a bumpy wagon ride around the park. Woo! Pete shouts. At the end of the ride, Pete grabs a handful of sweet smelling hay from the wagon and stuffs it into his backpack. Pete heads over to the apple orchard where he and Callie go apple picking. They eat sweet apple donuts and drink hot apple cider and fill their buckets with apples of all different shapes and sizes. Before he leaves, Pete chooses a round red apple and drops it into his backpack. Next, Pete stops by the park. He plays touch football with Bob and their friends. Pete scores a touchdown and everyone cheers. After the game, Pete grabs Bob's football and stuffs it into his backpack. It barely fits. Bob won't mind if I borrow this. Pete says. Finally, Pete heads back home, but he stops in his front yard, which is covered in bright leaves falling from the trees. Pete helps his dad rake the leaves into big colorful mounds. Then Pete runs and jumps into all the leaf piles. After he's done jumping, Pete picks a bunch of red and gold and orange leaves and stuffs them into his backpack. Pete's backpack is bursting with fall souvenirs. He can't wait to show mom. I love autumn, Pete says. Wonderful, says mom. You know, these would make great decorations for Thanksgiving. So Pete helps mom fill a basket with all his mementos. They place the basket at the center of the table. You did a great job, Pete, says mom. It's beautiful, says dad. Is that my football? Asks Bob. Just then, 
the doorbell rings. The Thanksgiving guests are here. All of Pete's family and friends gather around the dining room table. They tell stories and laugh at jokes while they eat. Everyone is having a great time. Pete looks around the table and smiles. He loves lots of things about autumn, but Pete knows what he loves most all year long. His family and friends. Thanks for watching. Click subscribe. See you later, alligator. And the Missing Cupcakes by Kimberly and James Dean. Pete and Gus were as busy as could be. They were getting ready for the cupcake party. It started at three. They were making cupcakes for everyone. Pete and Gus counted them just for fun. They had 10 when they were done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh no! Hang on! Some of the cupcakes were gone. They were sure there had been 10. Pete said, Maybe we need to count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They counted the cupcakes lined up straight. Now there were only eight. It looked like someone had taken two, but who? Pete and Gus did not know what to do. Just then, they found a clue. Gus said, look what I have found. Sprinkles on the ground. I bet it was Squirrel. She loves sprinkles. Squirrel said, it wasn't me. It couldn't be. I've been at the spelling bee. Uh-oh. More cupcakes are missing. Come and see. One, two, three, four, five, six. This was too weird. Two more cupcakes had disappeared. Now there were only six. Someone must be playing tricks. But who? Pete and Gus did not know what to do. Just then, they found another clue. Pete said, I bet it was Alligator. He loves to eat. Alligator said, It wasn't me. It couldn't be. I've been learning my ABCs. Uh-oh, more cupcakes are missing. Come and see. One, two, three, four. Now there were only four. Someone had taken two more. But who? Pete and Gus did not know what to do. Just then, they found another clue. I bet it was Turtle, said Pete. I know Turtle loves sweets. Turtle said, it wasn't me. 
It couldn't be. I've been swimming in the sea. Uh-oh, more cupcakes are missing. Come and see. What on earth was going on? All the cupcakes were now gone. Pete and Gus did not know what to do. They started looking for another clue. They found Grumpy Toad with icing on his face. Pete and Gus had solved the case. I am so sorry. It was me. I could not stop with just one. I ate and ate till there were none. Everyone agreed. Grumpy Toad would have to miss the fun. He could not come after what he had done. Pete said, but wait, Grumpy Toad made a mistake. This is true. Let's give him a second chance. That's what friends do. Pete told Grumpy Toad they would give him another chance. He was so excited, he did a happy dance. The night of the party was so much fun. Grumpy Toad brought more than enough cupcakes for everyone. Pete the Cat's Cupcake Party. Valentine's Day is Cool by Kimberly and James Dean. I meow you. It was the day before Valentine's Day and Pete was riding his skateboard home when he saw his friend Callie. She was holding a big red heart that said love. Have you finished your Valentine's Day cards? Asked Callie. No, Valentine's Day is not cool, Pete said. Oh, Pete, Valentine's Day is my favorite holiday. It's a day to tell people how special they are to you, Callie insisted. Pete skated on, but something in the back of his mind told him that Callie might be right. By the time Pete got home, he had decided that Callie was right about Valentine's Day. So he got out his pencils, paper, crayons, and markers and sat down at the kitchen table. First, Pete started to work on a card for his friend Larry. Pete made several cards with big red hearts, but he was not happy with his work. Pete wanted to make the perfect cards for every cat in his class. I'll never get all these cards done in time, Pete told his mom. Pete's mom smiled. Just do your best, she said. Just tell Larry why he is cool. There is something cool about every cat. Pete got back to work. He thought hard about what was cool about Larry. To Larry, happy Valentine's Day from Pete. Perfect, Pete said. After that, it didn't take Pete long to make cards for all the boys. To Josh, to Trey, to Rob, to John. Then Pete made special cards for all the girls and wrote Love Pete on each one. And of course, he made the biggest heart-shaped card for his mom. 
The next day, Pete and Callie waited for the bus together. I decided you were right. Valentine's Day is cool. That's awesome, Callie said. By the way, I am having a Valentine's Day party at my house after school if you want to come. The bus pulled up then and Pete and Callie got on. Mr. Ted, the bus driver, smiled and said good morning. But as soon as they were in their seats, Pete put his head in his paws. What's wrong? Callie asked. I forgot to make a card for Mr. Ted, he cried. Then Pete thought, but I can make him an awesome card before we get to school. Pete pulled out a piece of paper and colored pencils from his backpack. He began to draw. Happy Valentine's Day. Thanks for picking us up every day for school, Pete and Callie said as they handed Mr. Ted his valentine. Thank you, Mr. Ted told them. You just made my day. What about Mrs. Gold, the crossing guard? We need to make her a valentine too, Pete practically shouted. Let's do it, Callie said. Let's make valentines for everyone. Pete and Kelly got super busy making cards for everyone. To Mrs. Gold, Happy Valentine's Day. After school, Pete went to Callie's party. He rang the bell and then he froze. Callie opened the door only to find her friend in a panic. What's wrong, Pete? I forgot something very important, Pete admitted. What? Callie asked. I just realized I forgot to make a card for you, Pete said. That's okay, Pete. Cards are just a way of showing you care. Hanging out with you, that's way better than any card. This is the best Valentine's Day ever. And happy Valentine's Day to you. Love, Pete. Pete the Cat, Five Little Pumpkins by James Dean. Five little pumpkins sitting on a gate. The first one said, Oh my, it's getting late. The second one said, There are witches in the air. The third one said, But we don't care. The fourth one said, Let's run and run and run. The fifth one said, I'm ready for some fun. Ooh, hoo went the wind. And out went the lights. And the five little pumpkins rolled out of sight. Happy Halloween! The Cat and the Cool Cat Boogie by Kimberly and James Dean. Pete 
the cat was learning a new dance, the Cool Cat Boogie. Then Grumpy Toad came along. I really dig that song, but Pete, you dance all wrong. Pete did not know what to say. He just turned and walked away. Pete couldn't sleep at all that night. What if Grumpy Toad was right? What if my moves are bad? The thought of not dancing made Pete feel sad. Dancing is like magic. When I hear a groovy beat, I'm full of happy in my feet. I won't give up. I love to dance. Let me give it one more chance. Pete was practicing the cool cat boogie when he saw a squirrel. Hey squirrel, how do you dance? How do you groove? Can you teach me how to move? Sure, Pete. It's a simple song. Just cha-cha-cha and dance along. Ah! Ouch, Pete! You stepped on my toes. That's not how this dance goes. Pete did not know what to say. He just turned and walked away. But dancing is like magic. When I hear a groovy beat, I'm full of happy in my feet. I won't give up. I love to dance. Let me give it one more chance. Pete was still practicing the cool cat boogie when Gus came along. Hey Gus, how do you dance? How do you groove? Can you teach me how to move? Sure, Pete, it's a simple song. Just do the robot and dance along. Ouch, Pete, you bopped me on the nose. That is not how this dance goes. Pete did not know what to say. He just turned and walked away. But dancing is like magic. When I hear a groovy beat, I'm full of happy in my feet. I won't give up. I love to dance. Let me give it one more chance. Pete was still trying to do the cool cat boogie when Turtle came along. Hey Turtle, how do you dance? How do you groove? Can you teach me how to move? Sure Pete, it's a simple song. Just shake your tail and dance along. Oh no, Pete, you fell. You tripped over my shell. Everybody knows that's not how this dance goes. Pete felt like giving up. Wise Old Owl had been watching from his tree. Pete, it doesn't matter how you move as long as you are being you. You are right. I never want to miss a chance to dance. When you hear a groovy beat and you feel happy in your feet, just dance, 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 dance.
Heat the Cat and the Treasure Map by James Dean. Captain Pete looks across Cat Cove. The sun is sparkling on the water. It's a beautiful day for an adventure. Something flies toward Captain Pete's ship. It's a parrot. Squawk, says the parrot. She gives Captain Pete a crumpled piece of paper. What is it? asks first mate Callie. Captain Pete looks at the paper. There's a long trail that ends with an X. <gasps> it's a treasure map, he says. Treasure, says first mate Callie. Where? On Secret Island, says Captain Pete. Let's go, says first mate Callie. Woohoo, cries the crew. Treasure! Swoosh, splash. Captain Pete steers the ship through the big waves. The salty wind pushes the sails. The ship is going really fast. Good job, mateys, says Captain Pete. We'll be there in no time. Uh-oh, Captain Pete spoke too soon. He spies something coming toward them. What is that? asks first mate Callie. A giant arm reaches up and splashes the water. It makes a wave that crashes down on Pete's boat. Ker splash! Squawk! cries the parrot. Arg! yells the crew. Ker splash! Another arm comes crashing down. The crew is scared, but not Captain Pete. He knows that the monster isn't trying to scare them. He's rocking a cool beat. Captain Pete takes out his guitar and strums. The monster rises out of the water. The crew takes cover, but the monster stops when he hears Pete playing. He nods his head along. He's not a scary sea monster. He's an awesome sea drummer. Rock on, says Captain Pete. Thanks, booms the monster. Oh no, Captain, shouts first mate Callie. A big storm is coming. Batten down the hatches, says Captain Pete. Everyone gets ready for the storm. The waves toss the ship. But the crew is brave. Captain Pete has an idea. Hey there, friend, he yells to the sea monster. We need some help. The monster grabs the ship with his giant arms and gives it a great big boost. The ship moves right through the storm. Hooray, shouts the crew as the monster swims up to the boat. Thanks, friend yells Captain Pete. No problem, booms the monster. Land ho, yells first mate Callie, pointing out over the sea. All the pirates rush to look. It's Secret Island, says Captain Pete. On the beach, their buddy, Grumpy Toad, is waiting with a glittering pile of treasure. Ahoy, mateys! You got my map, Grumpy Toad says. Treasure is no fun if you can't share it with your friends. The crew is so happy. They do catwheels in the sand. Thanks, Grumpy Toad, they shout. I think we're missing something, says Captain Pete. Let's play some music. What a great idea! says Grumpy Toad. The pirates load all the treasure onto the ship. Captain Pete takes out his guitar and strums, but something is missing from his song. Our drummer, Captain Pete says, as the sea monster pops his head above the waves. Would you like to join my crew? 
Aye, booms the monster. Rock on, Captain Pete says, as the monster joins in on a rockin' pirate tune. Captain Pete's crew is complete. All the pirates sing, yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for us. The Cat, Crayons Rock by Kimberly and James Dean. Pete loves his big box of groovy crayons. He loves to draw things like cars, trucks, flowers, and trees. And most of all, the big blue sea. From rockin' red to cool cat blue, with a box of crayons, there's nothing Pete can't do. One day, Pete decided to draw something new. His friends! Using lots of colors is so much fun. Pete wanted to use every one. He scribbled and drew a great big smile. His drawings were groovy and rockin' with style. Crayons rock! Pete was proud of the pictures he drew. He hoped his friends would dig them too. Pete showed Grumpy Toad first. Grumpy Toad said, This doesn't look right. Those colors are way too bright. Pete thought, hey, no sweat, that's all right. The next one will be dynamite for Gus from Pete. Pete showed Gus his picture too. Gus asked, who is this supposed to be? It doesn't really look like me. Pete thought, hey, no sweat. That's all right. The next one will be just right. For Callie from Pete. Pete finally showed Callie her picture. Callie said, this one is fine, but it feels like something's missing from mine. Pete said, what a mess! Bummer. I guess my drawings aren't the best. Pete started to frown. He put his crayons down. In art class, the teacher asked, Pete, what are you going to make? I don't know. I'm afraid of making a mistake. Pete looked around. Gus drew the coolest superheroes. Callie's flowers were awesome, out of sight. Grumpy's motorcycle was just right. Pete's heart sank, his paper was blank. The gang looked at Pete and said, no sweat, it's all right. It doesn't have to be just right. Your art is cool because it's you. Your art is so unique. Grab your groovy box of crayons. Show us your technique. The teacher agreed. Art should be fun. Art is for everyone. From rockin' red to cool cat blue. With a box of crayons, there's nothing you can't do. Pete smiled. There are no rules. It's no big deal. Art is about how it makes you feel. 
Pete loved his cool art. That's the one thing Pete knew. Suddenly, Pete knew exactly what to do. He tried again. Instead of drawing them one by one, Pete drew the whole gang, just having fun. Wow, way to go, Pete. That's a rockin' masterpiece. Grumpy Toad, Gus, and Callie agreed. Pete's picture was off the charts. See, that's the groovy thing about art. The best art comes from the heart. Crayons rock. Big Lunch, created by James Dean. Here comes Pete. It is lunchtime. Pete is ready to eat. What should Pete eat? A sandwich would be nice. Yes, Pete wants a sandwich. Pete opens the fridge. Pete looks at his sandwich. It is too small. Something is missing. Pete knows what it needs. His sandwich needs an apple. Pete loves apples. His sandwich needs crackers. Crackers are crunchy. Pete loves crunchy crackers. Pete looks at his sandwich again. It is still too small. Pete is very hungry. Pete adds a pickle. Pete adds cheese. Pete adds an egg, two hot dogs, a banana, and a can of beans. Something is missing. Pete adds ice cream. He takes three huge scoops. Pete's sandwich is too big for Pete to eat. Pete wonders what to do. Pete thinks and thinks. I've got it, Pete says. Pete calls all of his friends. He asks them to come over. Everyone goes to Pete's house. They are all very hungry. Pete shows them his big lunch. Are you hungry? Asks Pete. Pete's sandwich is big enough for everyone. Dig in, says Pete. Pete's sandwich is good. Pete's sandwich is very good. Pete's sandwich is all gone. Pete's friends are full. They liked Pete's big lunch. Thanks for lunch, Pete's friends say. Thanks for sharing. You're welcome, Pete says. Sharing is cool. Pete the Cat, Construction Destruction by James Dean. Recess, Pete shouts as the bell rings. But when Pete goes outside to play, oh no, the playground is a disaster. The swings are broken, the slide is rusty, and the sandbox is full of weeds. Pete makes plans for a new playground. Wow, says Principal Nancy. Can you really build that? 
Not by myself, says Pete. I'm going to need some help. Whatever you need, Pete, it's yours. The next day, Pete arrives at the playground before school. The construction crew is already there. He gives them the go ahead to tear down the old playground. Rumble, rumble, honk. Down goes the slide, creak, crash. Down go the swings, clink, clink. Down goes the tower, bang, boom. A truck arrives to recycle the metal, honk, honk. Rumble, rumble, honk, honk. The new playground equipment has arrived. It's time to get to work. The cement mixer will pour concrete. The dump truck will bring sand and dirt. The backhoe will dig. The whole team will get the job done. Clunk, whack, thud. Building a playground is hard work. The new playground is cool, but it's not cool enough. What do you think? Pete asks, holding up his latest plans. It will be too hard to build, says one of the workers, and everything is almost finished, says another. But it will make this the best playground ever, Pete says. Then let's do it, the workers say. Screwdrivers twist in screws. Wrenches tighten the nuts. The workers try to make everything perfect. Hooray! The new playground is ready. Everyone is amazed until... Creak, creak, creak. Smash, crunch, thud. Oh no, says Principal Nancy as the new playground crashes to the ground. The pieces are all mixed up. Everyone is disappointed, except for Pete. It's not how we planned it, Pete shouts. It's even better. This playground is filled with surprises and places to explore. The school playground is the most amazing playground ever. Sometimes you've got to dare to dream big. Pete the Cat, Parents' Day Surprise. Based on the book series by Kimberly and James Dean, adapted by Anne Lamb from the Prime Video episode, Parents' Day Surprise, written by Lexi Kohanovitz. Pete and his friends are making pancakes for the Parents' Day breakfast at school. Pete's pancakes look like musical notes. Grumpy covers his with extra syrup to attract flies. Emma makes her pancakes look like painter's palettes. Everyone is having fun, except for Gustavo. What's wrong, Gus? Pete asks. My mama was supposed to be here for the pancake breakfast, Gustavo says, but she is in the military station far away and a storm is preventing her from coming home. Pete and his pals want to cheer Gus up, so they think of other ways for him to send love to his mama on Parents' Day. I've got a great idea, says Grumpy. 
Let's make your mama a video. She would love a video, says Gustavo. I've been thinking about writing a song for mama about how she's a pilot and how she does so much to protect us and how my love for her soars higher than the jet planes she flies. Pete pulls out his guitar. How about a music video? That's a great idea, says Gustavo. Can you all help me? Of course we will, says Callie. I'm so lucky to have such amazing friends, Gus says. Grumpy can't wait to get started. I'll direct, he says. We will set the video in outer space. Everyone has a job to do. Callie collects costumes from the school theater. Sally collects props to be the planets and stars. Emma paints the background scenes. Pete practices his music while Gus writes the lyrics to the song. There is so much Gus wants to say but it's not coming out quite right. You are the pilot of my life, Mama, and I am the co-pilot, and Poppy is the first officer? This is not what I want to say. Before Gus knows it, everyone is ready to start filming the video. Action, Grumpy shouts. Gus tries to sing and dance, but he's too nervous. The words are coming out all wrong. Cut, says Grumpy. Let's just forget the video, Gus says as he walks away. Pete finds his buddy on the playground. My mama is my hero, says Gus. I just wish she were here for Parents' Day so I could tell her that I'm so proud to be her son. While Gus talks to Pete, his friends film all the nice things he says about his mama. They have a new secret plan that will cheer Gus up. Later at the Parents' Day Pancake Breakfast, Gus tells his poppy about the video. I tried to make a surprise for mama, Gus says, but it did not turn out well. That's okay, Poppy says. Your mama knows how much you love her. Just then, Grumpy clears his throat. Excuse me, can I have everyone's attention? I want to introduce a little film we made with Gus. Gus realizes they're about to play the video for his mama. But how? He never finished it. Gus's friends work together to finish the video as a surprise for Gus. And it is awesome. Gus's song and video sound amazing. To keep us safe at home, mama jets across the sky and I want her to know she makes my spirit fly. I wish the jet you fly would bring you home to me, but I know you protect us all, so we sing gratefully. For all the things you are and all the things you've done, you are my shining star. I'm so proud to be your son. This little tune I'm trying to croon is completely true. Like a red balloon, big as the moon, that's my love for you. When the video ends, everyone at Parents' Day claps and cheers. That was amazing, says Poppy. Your mama will be so surprised. I am very excited for her to see it, says Gus. Do you think she'll like it? Someone answers from behind them. Like it? I love it, Goosty. 
It's Gustavo's mama. Mama, Gus gasps. How can you be here? You are all the way around the world. The storm cleared and I was able to make it after all. Gus's mama gives him a big hug. I wanted to surprise my two favorite guys, she says. But what a lovely surprise for me. Gustavo introduces his mama to his friends. Gustavo is so proud of you, Grumpy says. Well, I am very proud to be Gustavo's mama, Mama says, pulling Gus and Poppy in for a family hug. Everyone sits down to enjoy the Parents' Day pancakes. Gus can't stop smiling. Pete says, it always feels good to make something for someone you love. Thanks for watching. Click subscribe. See you later, alligator. Pete the Cat, Old MacDonald Had a Farm by James Dean. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had some chickens, E-I-E-I-O, with a cluck cluck here and a cluck cluck there, here a cluck, there a cluck, everywhere a cluck cluck, Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had some dogs, E-I-E-I-O, with a woof woof here and a woof woof there, here a woof, there a woof, everywhere a woof woof, Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had some cows, E-I-E-I-O, with a moo moo here and a moo moo there, here a moo, there a moo, everywhere a moo moo, Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had some pigs, E-I-E-I-O, with an oink oink here and an oink oink there, here an oink, there an oink, everywhere an oink oink, Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had some horses, E-I-E-I-O, with a nay nay here and a nay nay there, here a nay, there a nay, everywhere a nay nay, Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had some cats, E-I-E-I-O, with a meow meow here and a meow meow there, here a meow, there a meow, everywhere a meow meow, Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had some goats, E-I-E-I-O, with a ba-ba here and a ba-ba there, here a ba, there a ba, everywhere a ba-ba, Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. 
Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on the farm he had some ducks, E-I-E-I-O, with a quack quack here and a quack quack there, here a quack, there a quack, everywhere a quack quack, Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had some turkeys, E-I-E-I-O. With a gobble gobble here and a gobble gobble there, here a gobble, there a gobble, everywhere a gobble gobble. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had some roosters, E-I-E-I-O, with a cock-a-doodle-doo here and a cock-a-doodle-doo there, here a cock-a-doodle-doo, there a cock-a-doodle-doo, everywhere a cock-a-doodle-doo. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had some donkeys, E-I-E-I-O. With a hee-haw here and a hee-haw there, here a hee-haw, there a hee-haw, everywhere a hee-haw. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had some sheep. E-I-E-I-O, with a mama here and a mama there, here a ma, there a ma, everywhere a mama. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had some frogs, E-I-E-I-O. With a ribbit ribbit here and a ribbit ribbit there, here a ribbit, there a ribbit, everywhere a ribbit ribbit, old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had some geese, E-I-E-I-O. With a honk honk here and a honk honk there, here a honk, there a honk, everywhere a honk honk. Old MacDonald had a farm, e -I, -E I O. Peep the Cat, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star by James Dean. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. When the blazing sun is gone, when he nothing shines upon. Then you show your little light, twinkle, twinkle all the night. Then the traveler in the dark thanks you for your tiny spark. He could not see which way to go if you did not twinkle so. In the dark blue sky you keep, and often through my curtains peep. For you never shut your eye till the sun is in the sky. As your bright and tiny spark lights the traveler in the dark. Though I know not what you are, Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. 
Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. How I wonder what you are. Pete the Cat, Big Easter Adventure by Kimberly and James Dean. Pete was so excited. Easter was here. He couldn't wait for his basket of goodies. Jelly beans were his favorite. Uh-oh, his basket was empty except for a note. Pete, please help. Find the eggs. Paint the eggs. Hide the eggs. Thanks, the Easter Bunny. P.S. Wear these. Pete put on the bunny ears and thought, a cat with ears like a bunny? Now that's funny. Happy Easter, chickens. Do you have any eggs today? Pete asked, I am helping the Easter Bunny. Sure, Pete, we have a lot of eggs, the chicken said. We are happy to help, but don't you need a bunny nose and a fluffy bunny tail? The chickens were right. A bunny nose and tail would be neat. Then Pete's costume would be complete. Pete put on the nose and tail like a bunny's. A cat dressed up like a bunny? Now that's funny. Now Pete was ready. It was getting late and he still had a lot of eggs to decorate. What colors would Pete use? Hop, hop, hop. Off to the tool shed for paint and brushes. Pete couldn't wait to paint the eggs. Some eggs had one color, some eggs had two, some eggs were red, and some eggs were blue. When the egg painting was done, Pete had a basket full of bright, colorful, amazing eggs. Now, hiding them would be lots of fun. But where, oh where, would Pete hide the eggs? Around the neighborhood for all his friends to find. Pete hid eggs in flower pots. He hid them in the water spout. And when he was done hiding the eggs, Pete the cat was all worn out. Helping others out is what Easter is all about, Pete said. Pete's job was done. He was hiding the last one when the Easter Bunny arrived. Great job, Pete. You were a big help, said the Easter Bunny. The Easter Bunny gave Pete an award for a job well done. Helping others can be lots of fun. Happy Easter, everybody. Pete the Cat, The Great Leprechaun Chase by James Dean. Tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day and Pete's teacher, Mr. G, is teaching about leprechauns. The only time you can catch one is on St. Patrick's Day. A leprechaun will bring you good luck, Mr. G says. Now, Everyone in the class wants a leprechaun. Pete gets a great idea. He will open a leprechaun catching business. St. Patrick's Day comes and Pete gathers some supplies. He hangs a sign above his stand. This will be easy, 
Pete thinks. Squirrel is Pete's first customer. I want a leprechaun, Squirrel says. I need good luck for my test. Cool, I'm on it, says Pete. Pete has a plan. He will follow a rainbow until he finds a leprechaun. Finally, Pete arrives at the end of the rainbow and finds Clover the leprechaun next to a pot of gold. Pete sneaks up behind Clover. Swoosh! But Clover is too fast. Did you think you'd be catching me so easily? He asks. Once there was a cat named Pete who thought nabbing some luck would be neat. Then he happened upon a smart leprechaun who he'll find quite tricky to beat. Clover disappears in a puff of green smoke. Pete will need a new plan. That afternoon, Gus visits Pete's lucky leprechaun catchers. I want a leprechaun, Gus says. I need good luck for my band recital. Pete says, I'll see what I can do. Pete plans to lure Clover out with his music. He plays a jaunty song on his guitar. Before long, Clover dances over to Pete. Just a little closer, Pete thinks. Suddenly, Clover starts spinning around Pete. Round and round, Clover goes faster and faster. Oh no! Clover wraps up Pete with a rope. Pete has finally met his match, a crafty leprechaun he just can't catch. He'll never win, he better give in, or find something else to snatch. That evening, Callie visits Pete's lucky leprechaun catchers. I want a leprechaun, Callie says. I need good luck for my tennis match. Hmm, says Pete. St. Patrick's Day is almost over. There isn't much time left to catch a leprechaun, but Pete won't give up yet. Pete sets a trap for Clover. Before long, Clover tiptoes up to the trap and sniffs the air. Mmm, I love candy, he whispers, peering under the box. Pete waits very quietly. Crash! Pete rushes over and checks underneath the trap, but it is empty. Clover skips away. Pete has tried many a plot, but still I haven't been caught. And isn't it dandy, I even got candy, while Pete ends up with squat. Pete has an idea. He follows the trail of spilled candy to Clover's secret hideout. Pete sneaks up behind Clover. Swoosh! Pete finally catches Clover. Why do ye want me? Clover asks. I'm helping my friends who need some extra luck, Pete says. Luck doesn't come from having a leprechaun, says Clover. You and your friends have each other. That's already makes you as lucky as can be. Could Clover be right? Pete is one very lucky cat. A lucky cat doesn't need a lucky leprechaun. He lets Clover go. Pete decides he will be the good luck his friends need by helping them out himself. Pete helps Squirrel study for his test. Squirrel aces it. Pete helps Gus rehearse for the recital. Gus rocks it. 
Pete helps Callie practice for her match. Callie wins it. Clover magically appears. Good job, Pete, says Clover. I have one more poem for ye. While Clover played hide and seek, Pete learned something unique. The luck that you make beats luck that you take any old day of the week. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Pete the Cat Rocking in My School's Shoes Art by James Dean, creator of Pete the Cat Story by Eric Litwin Here comes Pete, strolling down the street Rocking red shoes on his four furry feet Pete is going to school And he sings this song I'm rocking in my school shoes. I'm rocking in my school shoes. I'm rocking in my school shoes. Pete is sitting at his desk when his teacher says, Come on, Pete, down that hall to a room with books on every wall. Where is Pete going? The library. Pete has never been to the library before. Does Pete worry? Goodness no! He finds his favorite book and sings his song. I'm reading in my school shoes. I'm reading in my school shoes. I'm reading in my school shoes. Check out Pete. He's ready to eat in a big noisy room with tables and seats. Where is Pete? The lunchroom. It can be loud and busy in the lunchroom. Does Pete worry? Goodness, no. He sits down with his friends and sings his song. I'm eating in my school shoes. I'm eating in my school shoes. I'm eating in my school shoes. Pete and his friends are playing outside on a green grassy field with swings and tall slides. Where is Pete? The playground. Kids are running in every direction. Does Pete worry? Goodness no. He slides and he swings and he sings his song. I'm playing in my school shoes. I'm playing in my school shoes. I'm playing in my school shoes. All day long, Pete sings his song. I'm singing in my school shoes. I'm painting in my school shoes. I'm adding in my school shoes. I'm writing in my school shoes. When school is done, Pete rides the bus home. Pete's mom asks him, what did you do at school today? And Pete says, I was rocking in my school shoes. I was rocking in my school shoes. I was rocking in my school shoes. And I will do it again tomorrow. Because it's all good. Pete the Cat, I Love My White Shoes Art by James Dean, creator of Pete the Cat Story by Eric Litwin Pete the Cat was walking down the street in his brand new white shoes. Pete loved his white shoes so much, he sang this song. 
I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. Oh no! Pete stepped in a large pile of strawberries. What color did it turn his shoes? Red. Did Pete cry? Goodness no! He kept walking along and singing his song. Everything is cool. I love my red shoes. I love my red shoes. I love my red shoes. Oh no. Pete stepped in a large pile of blueberries. What color did it turn his shoes? Blue. Did Pete cry? Goodness no. He kept walking along and singing his song. Awesome. I love my blue shoes. I love my blue shoes. I love my blue shoes. Oh no, Pete stepped in a large puddle of mud. What color did it turn his shoes? Brown. Did Pete cry? Goodness no. He kept walking along and singing his song. Groovy. I love my brown shoes. I love my brown shoes. I love my brown shoes. Oh no. Pete stepped in a bucket of water. And all the brown and all the blue and all the red were washed away. What color were his shoes again? White! But now they were wet. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no! He kept walking along and singing his song, Rock and Roll. I love my wet shoes. I love my wet shoes. I love my wet shoes. Squeak, squeak, squeak. The moral of Pete's story is, no matter what you step in, keep walking along and singing your song. Because it's all good. Pete the Cat and His Magic Sunglasses by Kimberly and James Dean. Pete the Cat did not feel happy. Pete had never, ever, ever, ever been grumpy before. Pete had the blue cat blues. Then, as if things were not bad enough, along came Grumpy Toad. Grumpy Toad was never happy. He always wore a frown. But Grumpy Toad was not grumpy today. He said, these cool blue magic sunglasses make the blues go away. They help you see things in a whole new way. Pete put on the cool blue magic sunglasses. He looked all around, right on. The birds are singing, the sky is bright, the sun is shining, I'm feeling all right. Pete thanked Grumpy Toad for the cool blue magic sunglasses. He went on his way and soon he saw Squirrel. Squirrel did not look happy. Pete said, what's wrong, Squirrel? I'm so mad. Nothing is going my way. I only found one acorn today. 
Pete said, try these cool blue magic sunglasses. They help you see things in a whole new way. Squirrel put on the cool blue magic sunglasses and looked all around. Awesome! The birds are singing, the sky is bright, the sun is shining, I'm feeling all right. Pete said goodbye to Squirrel and continued on his way. Soon he saw his friend Turtle. Turtle did not look happy. What's wrong, Turtle? Pete asked. I'm so frustrated. Nothing is going my way. I am all upside down today. Pete said, Try these cool blue magic sunglasses. They help you see things in a whole new way. Turtle put on the cool blue magic sunglasses and looked all around. Far out, the birds are singing, the sky is bright, the sun is shining, I'm feeling all right. Pete kept rolling along until he saw Alligator. Alligator did not look happy. What's wrong, Alligator? Pete asked. I'm so sad. Nothing is going my way. No one wants to play with me today. Pete said, try these cool blue magic sunglasses. They help you see things in a whole new way. Alligator put on the cool blue magic sunglasses and looked all around. Rockin'! The birds are singing, the sky is bright, the sun is shining, I'm feeling all right! Pete was rolling along and feeling all right when suddenly he fell back. The cool blue magic sunglasses went crack. Uh-oh, Pete didn't know what to do without those sunglasses. Just then, Pete looked up at the tree. Wise old owl said, Pete, you don't need magic sunglasses to see things in a new way. Just remember to look for the good in every day. Hoo, hoo. Pete looked around without his sunglasses. Too cool. The birds are singing, the sky is bright, the sun is shining. We're feeling all right. Pete the Cat and the Bedtime Blues by Kimberly and James Dean. Pete and the gang had a great day. They'd been at the beach, surf and sun and tons of fun. But when the sun went down, they didn't want the fun to end. Pete had an idea. Hey, how about a sleepover? More time for tons of fun. Groovy. Pete's place. Let's go. The party was far out. 
but they knew they couldn't stay up all night. The gang decided it was time to say good night. On went the pajamas and out went the light. Good night, Gus. Good night, alligator. Good night, Toad. Good night, Pete. Pete was just about to catch some Z's when clap, clap, clap. Who did that? Pete asked. It was me, said Grumpy Toad. I don't want to go to bed. I want to clap instead. Pete covered his head. This cool cat needs to go to bed. Good night, Gus. Good night, alligator. Good night, Toad. Good night, Pete. Time to sleep. Pete tried again to catch some Z's when rat-a-tat-tat. Who did that? Pete asked. It was me, said Gus the platypus. I don't want to go to bed. I want to jam instead. Pete covered his head. This cool cat needs to go to bed. Time to sleep. Good night, Gus. Good night, alligator. Good night, toad. Good night, Pete. Pete closed his eyes to catch some Z's when he heard munch, munch, munch. Pete had a hunch it was alligator. He was always up for eating. What could Pete do? All the clapping, rat-a-tat-tatting, and munching was giving him the bedtime blues. Pete had a groovy idea. He got out his favorite bedtime story and started to read, first to himself and then to the gang. Pete the Cat and Ten Little Monsters. Pete noticed it was finally quiet. No more clapping, no more rat-a-tat-tatting, and no more munching. They all settled down. No one made a sound. Pete yawned and turned off the light. Good night, sleep tight. Time to catch some Z's. Tomorrow was another day for surfing sun and tons of fun. Pete the Cat and the Itsy Bitsy Spider by James Dean. One day while playing outside with his friends, Pete the cat spotted something cool. Look, shouted Pete. Wow, it's so small, said Gus. It's an itsy bitsy spider, said Callie. The itsy bitsy spider climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. Pete and his friends knew just what to do. Everyone cheered on the tiny spider. Pete the cat said, try again, itsy bitsy spider. So the itsy bitsy spider 
climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. Pete said, don't give up yet. They all cheered louder this time. Again, the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and Pete and his friends shouted, go itsy bitsy spider. Go itsy bitsy spider, don't give up, believe you can. And the itsy bitsy spider kept climbing up the water spout. Everyone celebrated and the spider took a bow. With the help of some friends, the itsy bitsy spider never gave up, even when the odds were against her. Pete the Cat, Scuba Cat by James Dean. Pete the Cat is excited. He is going scuba diving. Pete puts on a mask and fins. He has a tank full of air. He hopes to see lots of fish. If you are lucky, you might see a seahorse, says Captain Joe. A seahorse, says Pete. I can't wait. I never saw one before. Their ridges look like a horse's mane, says Captain Joe. Groovy, says Pete. Pete jumps into the water. Splash. Down, down, down he goes. Up, up, up go the bubbles. Pete looks for a seahorse. He sees a swordfish. Pete swims out of its way. Pete waves to a stingray. It has a long skinny tail. That's not a seahorse, thinks Pete. Pete looks high and low for the seahorse. Then he feels a tickle. Pete sees a school of fish. They all look alike, except for one. It puffs up. It is a blowfish. It is not a seahorse. Where could one be? Pete looks in the rocks. What is that? It is an octopus. It has eight legs. It is not a seahorse. Pete feels a tickle. What could it be? Pete turns. He sees a cave. Is there a seahorse inside? Pete sees a crab with claws. A seahorse does not have claws, Pete thinks. The cave is getting darker. Pete feels a tickle. Then he sees an eel. Pete swims past it. It is too long to be a seahorse. Oh no, it is too dark to see. How will Pete get out? Pete sees a jellyfish. It glows in the dark. Pete is almost out of the cave. He sees an angelfish. It is very colorful. Pete is out of the cave. So why is it so dark? Pete is in a shadow. He is in the shadow of a whale. Yikes! 
Pete wishes he could jump on a seahorse and ride away. Pete hops on a sea turtle instead. It takes him to the boat. I did not see a seahorse, thinks Pete. He feels a little tickle on his tail. A seahorse, cries Pete. What a surprise. You were with me all along, says Pete. What a cool adventure. Pete the Cat and the New Guy, written by Kimberly and James Dean. It was Sunday and Pete's friends had come to play. They were rocking to a new song when, beep, 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 there was a noise coming from across the street. Wise old owl had a view from his tree. Pete said, hey owl, what do you see? Owl said, all I see are green shoes and a red hat. Pete answered, sounds like my kind of cat. Pete could not imagine who this new guy could be. I really hope it's a new friend for me. On Monday, Pete wanted to say hi, but he was feeling kind of shy. So he just rode by and by and by and by until finally Pete got to meet the new guy. Pete said, I've never met anyone quite like you. You seem like a duck and like a beaver too. The new guy said to Pete, Hi, my name is Gus. Glad to meet you. I'm a platypus. Pete said, You're not like me and I am not like you. But I think being different is really very cool. On Tuesday, Pete and Gus took a walk down the street. They came to Squirrel, who was playing in a tree. Hi, Gus, said Squirrel. Climbing is easy. Try and see. Gus gave the tree a try, but the branch was way too high. I wish I could climb like you, but climbing is something I just can't do. Pete said, don't be sad, don't be blue. There is something everyone can do. On Wednesday, Pete and Gus took a walk down the street. They came to Pete's friend, Grumpy Toad, who said, come play, leapfrog with me. Jumping is easy, try and see. Gus jumped and leaped, but he couldn't get over Toad or Pete. I wish I could jump like you, but jumping is something I just can't do. Pete said, don't be sad, don't be blue. There is something everyone can do. On Thursday, Pete and Gus took a walk down the street Soon they saw Octopus who said, Come juggle with me. Juggling is easy. Try and see. I wish I could juggle like you, but juggling is something I just can't do. Pete said, Don't be sad. Don't be blue. There is something everyone can do. On Friday, Pete and Gus took a walk down the street. Gus said, I can't juggle or jump or climb a tree. It's no fun around here for me. 
On Saturday, Pete hoped Gus would come out to play. I wish Gus wasn't sad. I wish Gus wasn't blue. I wish there was something we could do. Just then, Pete heard a groovy sound. It was coming from across the street. Gus was rocking to his own beat. Sweet! Pete said, check out Gus the platypus. He found something cool he can do with us. Tap, thump, thump. Thump, thump, tap, tap. He's not sad, he's not blue. Gus found something that everyone can do. Thanks for watching. Click subscribe. See you later, alligator.